So the membrane is a fluid mosaic. Fluidity depends on a number of factors. Clearly, membranes are more fluid at higher temperatures simply because greater thermal motion means that the phospholipids can expand and contract and bump into each other more, so higher temperature leads to greater fluidity. The degree of, of fatty acid saturation in the phospholipids also affects fluidity, and in this picture of a phospholipid bilayer, you can see that the kinks introduced into the fatty acids by double bonds in unsaturated fatty acids increases the spacing between the phospholipid tails. And if you push apart the phospholipids, then they will tend to be more fluid. That is why more unsaturated fatty acids lead to greater fluidity. Cholesterol, on the other hand, which is a major component of membranes, actually stiffens the membranes by filling in the gaps between the unsaturated phospholipid fatty acid tails. And that results in a greater rigidity or inflexibility of the membrane, that is to say, a less fluid membrane. Now, this has interesting consequences. You know that cellular life exists all over this planet, from the tropics all the way to under the polar ice caps. And we're talking here of cold-blooded animals, animals that don't maintain very high body temperatures, much above ambient, much above the temperature of their surroundings. So we have tropical fish, for example, and we have fish that swim under the Arctic ice. Think about how the membranes of the cells of these fish might differ in order to guarantee that there will be the right amount of fluidity to allow proper membrane function.